Javier in Madrid, Spain writes, I was surprised about the musicality of a cheap Chinese single-ended amplifier with two EL34 tubes I connected uh, in a biamped way with my Prima Luna push-pull with eight EL34s for the bass. That's those EL34s are tubes. Although the low power, which was only four watts, uh, the musicality was astonishing and different. Is this the quality of music available with uh, typical single-ended triodes, or are there something else? Uh, is there something else going on? Sorry, I'm sort of interpreting through. <laughs> his, hey, you speak English a heck of a lot better than I speak Spanish. Um, so, single-ended amplifiers, and usually these are called sets or single-ended triodes. And there are some solid-state versions of it. Uh, my friend Nelson Pass famously built one um, that it was the Aleph series. And a single-ended amplifier is a single device that is swinging from positive to negative, positive to negative, producing the signal. So we, we would call it in engineering a one sex device. So if it was a solid state device, maybe we would have an NPN transistor, a single or a, a, a multiple ones. If they're in parallel, we consider it single. Okay. So it doesn't matter how many of these, like in the tube set, you could have five tubes all of them in parallel, but if they're all doing the same thing, sitting at zero and then going up and down, up and down as a single unit, whether they're in parallel or not, doesn't really matter. So that, as opposed to a more, what we would call a complementary setup, where what you typically see is an NPN transistor and a PNP, and that means that the NPN is handling the positive half of the sine wave and the complement to it, the PNP, is handling the bottom half. Now this is a much more efficient way because you're only, each one's only handling half the system or ha half the signal and then it's turning off and then we handle the other half. So the worst thing you can do is have a transistor or a tube sitting halfway between uh, the two rails, the, the, the top and the bottom rail, and then moving up and down because now you're generating a lot of heat, you have an efficiency loss, and it just, it's, it's the single worst way to design an amplifier if efficiency is your goal. It is <laughs> about as inefficient as it gets. Now we can go into class A, which is even more inefficient, but anyway, single-ended amplifiers are fairly inefficient. That said, they do have a magical sound to them. Because unlike a complementary circuit where one half of the waveform is handled by one type of device and the other half by another, which creates, because they're never identical, so that creates a discontinuity between the signal. <clears throat> and we tend to hear that. So using one device for the whole thing has a cohesiveness an outstanding sound to it, uh, as Javier is saying, that is real. So in our BHK amplifiers, these are big amps. These go from 650 watts down to 250 watts per channel. We use single sex devices. We use a N-channel MOSFET, a single N-channel MOSFET. Now, when I say single, it's the same thing. We've got a bunch of them in parallel, so we can handle all that current, but it's one sex device going up and down, up and down. And that is why the BHKs sound so magical and why Javier's single-ended triode, even though it's only four watts, sounds magical. Single output devices have a magic to them that's hard to beat. Okay. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later.